let's talk about uh, split charge relays or split charge systems. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Off Grid Power Solutions and in this episode it, it may seem quite elementary to some people but we're just going to talk about split charge systems or split charge relays or whatever you want to call them. Uh, I'll describe what they are and then we'll talk about whether they are appropriate for lithium based batteries or lithium batteries. So over here I've got an old relay just uh, for it's sort of a discussion point. Uh, it's a fairly heavy duty one, 70 amps, 12 volt 70 amps. Uh, you can see the live wires that were on here actually bolted on, not with spade connectors. So it's, it's very heavy duty, 70 amps, uh, capable of carrying a lot of current. So is it is it appropriate to charge your lithium battery? So this is an OPS 100, one of our batteries. It's, it's a lithium 100 amp hour battery, 12 volts. Um, a small little unit. Is it appropriate to charge this battery with a split charge system? So let's go to the whiteboard and just talk about a split charge system and uh, the, the two basic types of split charge systems and talk about uh, why you should or should not use those on a lithium battery. Uh, let me just grab a trail here very briefly. Uh, one of the things we see uh, spoken about quite a lot is um, guys that sell batteries and you know we sell lithium batteries. Um, this is one of ours, this is the 100 amp hour. Guys that sell batteries will often in order to get the sale say well you can just slot it in, there's no change to to make uh, our battery can cope with whatever you can throw at it. Um, and uh, you have to ask yourself the question, are they saying that just to get the sale or is, is there actually a, a valid argument that you can just slot these in place of a lead acid battery and not worry about what happens to it. So let's talk about how it actually all works now. So on the left here, we've got the, the engine and the starter battery and you can see the starter battery is connected to the alternator. So here's the alternator uh, part of the engine complex. And the whole idea of a split charge is that you have a, a good heavy duty uh, cable, a red, a live cable carrying live to your split charge and then coming out to your leisure battery, to the positive terminal on your leisure battery. On most of our European rigs, and this may be different uh, on in particular some of the American rigs, and uh, it was very definitely different on boats, houseboats and canal boats and yachts and things like that. Uh, on, on the vehicles in Europe, uh, the chassis is always uh, negative or neutral or whatever you want to call it. And uh, so our starter battery is connected to the chassis and uh, the chassis is also connected to the engine with a flexible strap usually. And that's how it all hangs together. So your split charge will also require a negative line and uh, then obviously your leisure battery is connected to the, the chassis as well. So, so the whole chassis becomes your, your neutral or, or your, your negative of, of your system. Now split charge basically is essentially a relay. So as I mentioned he has, he has a relay. So this is what your split charge could be with a wire going off to your alternator and another wire going off to your battery. And there are essentially two types of split charge systems. The one is operated by the D plus of your, your alternator. So when your alternator kicks in charging, uh, it sends a, it sends, it makes the D plus uh, live with 12 volts on it. And that uh, your split charge system, you're getting, you know, you connect it to your chassis to your negative and the D plus then goes live, that turns the relay on and closes the circuit and you get current flow essentially from your battery or alternator. It's the same thing really, whether it's coming from one or the other, it's actually really coming from the alternator. Uh, so you're getting live going from there, from the engine complex through your relay to your leisure battery. And what is essentially happening is that these two batteries are to all intents and purposes connected to each other and uh, as if they are one battery. And that, uh, when it comes to lithium, that has some, some issues. But I said that there are two ways that the split charge works. The one is D plus, the other is a 
a voltage, so D plus or voltage. So some of these will, you won't um, need all of these, you know, you won't need the D plus on it. It just simply detects the, uh, the voltage coming here, it knows the voltage there, and it decides based on the parameters that you input whether it's going to actually start the charging or not. And the the challenge with that now, as I said, when this closes the circuit, uh, these two batteries are put together, and uh, with all, you know, with all all that goes with that. So there are a few reasons why uh, I'm going to say that you should not use a split charge with lithium batteries. The one is, is with a lot of the modern alternators for the, uh, especially the Euro compliant alternators, they will. Uh, stop charging. They they do all sorts of weird things, and they, in order to uh, to to help you meet all the compliance required in Europe, uh, they they stop charging, and then your engine's working less, and then it can meet all the standards and what have you. So uh, the, that's the first problem. The second problem is that the the voltage that is coming out of here is often actually not what you want here. So the, these batteries, they like to be charged, let's say you have set your BMS uh, to 14.4 or 14.6 volts, that's what they like to be charged at and that's when they get to their full state of charge. And it's not often the case that an alternator is actually putting out the exact voltage. And certainly when you've got your, your starter, your lead acid starter battery, it's often not the exact voltage that your laser battery needs. The second um, issue is that these voltages are actually going up and down and up and down and, uh, and sometimes depending on, on how much your vehicle is revving, uh, the voltage goes up and then you uh, get to somewhere and you're idling and the voltage goes down and so uh, not, not a terribly good idea to have your laser battery or lithium battery going up and down and up and down in terms of voltage. The uh, Another reason is that when when uh, the relay has bridged these two batteries, essentially, you have no control over the amount of current that flows over. Um, no current, no, no control whatsoever. So whatever flows through is, is going to flow through. And um, that's another reason why you don't particularly want to simply connect them together. Because for one thing, it might be a case that your alternator is being pushed too hard. And interestingly, this is a bit of a rabbit trail, interestingly, a lot of alternators don't like it when they are very heavily loaded and the vehicle is revving at low revs. Uh, they, they're not spinning fast enough to pull decent air in to cool them down. And the that is when your alternator actually has the the most likelihood or the most chance of burning out is when, for example, the vehicle is even idling and uh, the system is drawing so much current, it's overloading this, it's not spinning fast enough to get um, uh, ventilation into the alternator to cool it down and the alternator then eventually burns out and usually when an alternator burns out it's quite catastrophic. Uh, you, the first you know of it is when it's too late and you're on the side of the road and, and your whole vehicle burns down or whatever the case is. So what, we, what we, we've seen on some occasions when, you, you know, you might get away with it nine times out of ten that uh, everything's okay just to use a split charge with a lithium battery, uh, but it's that one out of ten where things go wrong and if you're if you're lucky, it just actually messes the battery up. Uh, we've known where a battery, you know, completely the cell swelled up and the and the battery was made inoperable um, because of the weird stuff coming from uh, the system without any filtering. And if you're unlucky, this is going to actually overheat and you're going to burn your vehicle down. So split charge using uh, either a, a relay that's uh, uh, with the circuit is closed with a D plus or with voltage sensing or whatever, I wouldn't say that this is what you should be doing. Uh, really what you should be doing is something like, uh, and this is the Victron DC to DC. Uh, in this case, we've, it's very, the, this particular one is, is so simple. These are really well known and, and very well liked. 
And um, you got one common, this is what is called the non-isolated. So we, we're not isolating the neutrals. It's a common neutral. Or, and then you've got a, a positive going in and a positive coming out. And uh, these uh, are really good for those Euro alternators. Uh, so it keeps the alternator uh, alive, so to speak, uh, and uh, draws only 30 amps from the alternator. So um, in the vast majority of cases, the alternator can cope with that. It has enough spare capacity to give 30 amps to the leisure battery, and uh, it pushes out 30 amps. So uh, pretty pretty good in, in terms of 10 hours of running, it charges a... 300 amp hour battery from completely flat to completely full. Um, but most people don't actually flatten them that much. Certainly a 100 amp hour battery like this, uh, so you, you're gonna charge it with sort of three or four hours of driving, you're gonna charge it if it was completely flat, from completely flat to completely full. And that's pretty much what you want. So this is what we recommend. Use a DC to DC. This is the, the, the Victron one. Um, very popular, everybody knows about this. If you want to charge faster than what this can, uh, so 30 amp is not fast enough for you, you can simply put two of them in parallel uh, to charge your bank at 60 amps. If your alternator has the capacity and your your battery bank in your, for example, your motorhome is big enough that it's it, it, you need it to charge a lot faster, there's no reason why you can't put uh, two or even three of these in parallel to charge it really fast. But yeah, I, I would not go for a split charge system with a lithium battery uh, just because you, you've got no control over what's actually arriving in that battery. You've got no control over what it's actually drawing from your alternator. You do want to control it. And as I said, nine times out of 10, you might be fine, but it's at one time out of 10. Well, let's even say 99 out of 100, you might be fine, but if you're that unlucky 100th, um, things could go very badly wrong and you could even burn the vehicle down. So hopefully that is uh, useful, very elementary, and a lot of people will be saying, why are you preaching to the converted? But uh, yeah, we just thought we'd do that uh, just for those people who have asked the questions because we get that question asked a lot. A lot of people contacting us saying, uh, why can't I just use my split charge system? Why can't I just use the built-in uh, charging system on the vehicle? Let's say it's motorhome, uh, a rig that you've uh, bought secondhand or whatever, and it doesn't have a lithium battery, so you want to change to a lithium leisure battery. Um, a lot of people ask the question, can't I just simply slap the lithium leisure battery in and uh, not bother about changing anything in the charging system. In a future episode, we will cover one of the tricks to disable the onboard sort of ECB approach. So let's say this split charge is actually part of your motorhome built-in electronics when you buy the motorhome. Um, how do you actually uh, attach a DC to DC? But we'll cover that in another episode. So this is the first of two episodes. First one talking about whether you should keep your split, split charge, and the second is how to disable the ECB, which is essentially a split charge. So stay tuned for that, but I hope that this one uh, is handy for you. Cheers.